Welcome back to the show, ladies and gentlemen, the Mitchell Report Unleashed podcast. And I'd like to encourage everyone, like, share, subscribe, turn on the bell notification for everything regarding to the channel. And, you know, today was a conversation that I had to bring to the forefront conversation about podcasting. We've got creators in the space. We got consumers in the space. And I really wanted to leave this and just say to a lot of folks that podcasting, it will call your bluff. And it can call your bluff in several different ways. And what I want to speak to, what I'm being called to speak to is just the overall ability of having a podcast for officially eight years. 2016, October 31st, to now 2024, and we're past October 31st with over 500 episodes. Some folks are going to listen to this, and I know what they're going to do with it. But before we talk about the folks that are going to do with the applied knowledge that's going to be showcased here. I'm going to say one thing to the folks that are going to listen to this with a preconceived notion or confirmation bias and maybe allude to things of repressed anger or is he doing this because he's trying to gain or gather some sort of attention. This podcast is not here for recreational purposes only. See, 2021, I was audio only all the way up to then. Then because of a guest that came on my show, she said is, if you don't get on video, then there's no podcast that's going to be recorded. Which is now spun and it's now driven to the success of being captivated and correlated in in in-person conversations as well. Nothing I do on this platform is for recreational purposes only or that viral moment that I know a lot of creators are just aiming to get or to massage and stroke an ego. Because see, I've said this again, when it comes down to content creation, podcasting, speaking into a microphone, it's not for everyone. But you have to have the ability and you have to have the decorum And you have to have that sense of urgency and not have that ego to be able to sit in a space, doesn't matter if it's virtual, doesn't matter if it's in person, and know how to condone yourself and operate off the lens of being selfless than being selfish. And that's how we're going to start. You know, podcasting for me, I've, I've watched, you know, so many podcasts come and go. The come and go effect of podcasting. Heck, I listen to the Joe Budden podcast. I listen to the Patrick Bet David podcast. And a lot of those podcasts, yes, you can catch them in the audio form, but a lot of podcasts now are going to video form. And that's me as a consumer, and there's other ones. But see, when I sit in a space of creation, there's so many things that come with this. And the first thing I want to speak to when we talk about podcasting, but a lot of folks don't know about this realm of podcasting. That's what I'm here to speak to. They don't know about the ones that are working the nine to five, making money, bi-weekly paycheck, using that same amount of money to pay for editing using that same amount of money to pay for studio time, travel time. Doesn't matter if you take a travel by car, by bus, by train, even Ubering. That's what it sets into. That's the first initial step. I'm speaking now to my established podcasters, like myself, eight years. See, I don't make excuses. I make adjustments. Because we all know we have to work. And there's a lot of us that get into this space of podcasting. And the first thing we do, we know why we're showing up. 
in front of our community. We know why we're simply sitting here and we're creating the topics and the dialogues because we want to have empowering conversations about overcoming adversity, dating and relationships, entrepreneurship and business. And it doesn't matter how big and it doesn't matter how small the following needs to be. Can you captivate the ability to have the conversation? And does it come from a place of being selfless, not selfish. You see, I've seen a lot of folks create podcasts and then they submit because they look at the volume. They submit because they realize there's a lot more work that they need to put in. Not everybody has the ability to pay for editors, pay for studio space, right? That's why they created a whole virtual presentation. StreamYard, Riverside FM, Zoom. There's a laundry list of others that are out there. But it's for you to simply understand why is it that I want to create this podcast and where is it I'm trying to take it to? I'm not speaking to the ones that want to do this for recreational purposes only because recreational purposes just tells me that, what, you're just doing this in hopes to get what, viral? Because that's clearly what you're probably doing it for or to have recognition in your community that guess what? I have a podcast. Yo, guys, what's going on? I appreciate you. Thank you. Turn on all bell notifications, subscribe, like and comment to the podcast. It's the best way to stay up to date. And hey, it helps us gain the clarity and boost ourselves into that algorithm. We appreciate the support each and every day, each and every week. Let's keep on going to keep on growing. Peace. What's the reason? I'm not saying for everyone to have a niche. I'm not saying for everyone to come into this space and, you know, narrow themselves down to what it is they need to do. But you got to ask yourself is what's the reason why you are creating this podcast and where is it you're wanting to take it? It goes into all forms of content creation, ladies and gentlemen. Because I'll tell you, not everyone is built to sit, look at a camera, built to sit and have a mic position in their face. Because a lot of folks will want to regurgitate word salad. They want to say certain things to make it sound good in hopes to get that viral moment. I'm going to get into all the viral moments because this is what we're here to do. We're here to simply sit here and to create. This is what this space is about, creation. And are you doing it from what's inside of your heart? Or are you doing it what's, 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 what's going to simply sit here and to do what? Correlate into something that you want that viral moment. See, to gain a viral moment, you should be viral in your own life. Everything that it is you do, everywhere you go, every place you touch, everyone that looks at you, you hear this, this, this word they say is touch grass. Does your community, when you go out there, look at you and recognize you and can speak to you? Can they greet you? Do you operate off of self? Because folks can understand and see that. Life is so interesting because even in podcasting, the biggest tool that you have that a lot of folks don't realize is the connections that you build on this space. And I'm talking about the connections that I've shared and I've built from 2021. The David Melsers of the world, right? The Sean Anthony's of the world, the Mario Armstrong's of the world, the Nikki Saunders of the world, the Camp Specs of the world. These are all documented. I come into a space where I can talk about almost anything and everything because I have the range and I have the thought process. But one thing you're not gonna do is you're never gonna see me out here trying to chase and look for those viral moments and make a podcast 70% performative because there's some of them that are out there that are doing that. You should be able to simply sit in your space and know how to create from a lens of knowing why you're doing what it is you're doing. You see, for me, connection is everything. Collaboration is everything. Creation is everything. 
whatever order you want to put that in, it starts with connection first. Connection to create the communication, to create the creation, to create the collaboration. And when folks don't want to connect, that just speaks to tell you to who they are. What's their purpose? A lot of folks don't know what their purpose is because guess what? They've got the veil over their face. Not the veil over your face that you're going to simply sit to your back in the old school days of when you got married. But the veil because they live in a facade world, an ostentatious world. In a world that they're not simply coming from a place of selfless, but selfish. And you see that in business. You see that in entrepreneurship. You see that in content creation. A lot of folks just want to get around you to guess what? Line their own pocket. Believe into their own Kool-Aid that they're drinking. And, you know, I know the ones are going to hear this and they're going to say, Rory, why are you talking like this? You have repressed anger. No, I'm here to speak truth and live in authentic ability of myself because I know what it is I'm saying is the truth. And I don't shy away from the challenging conversations. I don't shy away from calling the way things are. A lot of folks operate just off of self because some of them just want to get around you for the, guess what? A meal ticket or to get around you to see your principles or to get around you to see what it is you're doing, your workflow, your creation. And then talk about, guess what? I'm leveling up. I'm doing the things that it is I need to do. No, you're not leveling up. And no, you're not doing the things that you need to do is because guess what? You want to ride on other people's coattails to get to where it is you want to get to. You're doing it because based off of ego, you're not doing it based off of being selfless. You're selfish. See, I'm going to say this. You can tend to see when someone is all about self. Because they always watch those times when they see you maybe get that guest or you get that studio booking. Or maybe you simply sit here and you do have a workflow that is so strategic that they'll be on your text message or they'll be on your phone or they're in your DM. Hey, we should collaborate. Hey, what you got going on? You can ask me all those things, but I can know if it's coming from a genuine purpose. That's why I see time management's everything in life, ladies and gentlemen. Time management and understanding your boundaries and your non-negotiables. And what does your productivity look like? A lot of folks will simply sit here and say they're doing all these things, but they have nothing to show for it. Nothing. Nothing to show for it. They're just hamster wheeling. They're hamster wheeling within their thoughts. They're hamster wheeling within the real life scenarios. And when you have boundaries and you have non-negotiables, you will tend to expose those people. And that's just how life is. You can expose a lot of folks around you very, very quickly when you see them not have the biggest thing, the biggest tool called communication. Their, their communication patterns and their tendencies that they come with is not pure. And how do you eliminate that? By putting your foot down, knowing what it is you believe in. And a lot of people can feel that it's based off of your energy, based off of a big personality. They know that they can't sit here and run roughshod over you because guess what? You have a stance. You know where you're going. You know how you're walking. You know how you're doing it. The ones that take advantage of you, it will always show. It will always show. It will. They try to take advantage because they're wanting to get into the same places that you're in, but they don't have the necessary, the necessary ingredients to do that. You can have all the talent in the world, but it's your character that's going to keep you in those spaces. Because I know what it is I do anytime I get into a space of podcasting. I keep raw, I keep organic, and I keep strict conversations. There's talking points, but I don't need to live off a of script. There's talking points but you're not gonna tone police me. There's talking points, but guess what? You're not gonna be able to control the narrative. I've been saying this from day one. I've said is that when it comes down to podcasting, if you wanna stick in the mainstream, be mainstream. If you wanna be conservative, be conservative. But one thing you cannot go wrong here is that I have the element to weigh not only one side, but the other is where I fall into the fault line of being a contrarian. And that's the reason why 500 and what 13 episodes shows that 
See, I know about the early days of podcasting when I had to sit on the floor with a mic or lay on the floor with a mic or record in the closet or turn my whole workflow to the closet where the clothes were projecting off the sound so I could soundproof the conversation. To where getting on speaker through a Bluetooth, pressing the record button and bringing in guests through FaceTime audio or on the phone. To using the Zoom platform recording services that they use for business conferences or touch-based conversations or training purposes. To now where I have my own virtual presentation that I go through, the lens of Riverside FM. See, a lot of folks are going to listen to this and say, Rory, you're fired up. Rory, what is the whole meaning of this? It's to speak to the creators that want to simply sit here to know better, to do better. Not the creators that are out here that are just wanting to just use people along the way. We're all access the same gifts in our life. Hence, you want to learn how to create a podcast? Hire that coach or find that mentor. But don't operate off of self, ladies and gentlemen. Be timely in what it is you're wanting. Right? Because we all have the same services. We got the audibles. We got the teachables. We got the Udemy's. We got the YouTubes. We got the podcasting channels. We got Google. All that information is there at your disposal, but you know what you have to do? You have to be able to seek inward, inward, ladies and gentlemen, inward to become outward. See, when you speak truth, it shall always set you free. When you speak truth, a lot of folks are going to be misaligned by how you are. It's the reason why they come up with all those ad hominems when you're ever in a conversation. They try to pick fun. They try to mock and jeer you. They try to say all of these different things. Oh, you're standoffish. Oh, you, you, you're defensive. Oh, you don't answer questions straight up because guess what? They can't control the narrative. If you don't know yourself, you're going to say all of these things. You can tend to see when there's pure energy that's around you. You see, podcasting is here to build community. But then also, too, the ones that are wanting to podcast because they're wanting to get that viral moment. They want the Haley Welsh moment. They want the hawk to spit on your thing moment. You should be hot to spitting on the things to repurpose inside of your life. Hawk two to simply sit here and to understand how you're going to go inward first. Hawk two and simply sit here and find the right resources of what it is you're wanting to do in life. Because true viral moments is when your one short form video is trending on every platform that's required with video, ladies and gentlemen. That's why I said podcasting will call your bluff. It will call your bluff very quickly. See, I can always tell when someone's operating off of self versus actually wanting to be collaborative. A lot of folks say what they say, oh, I'm collaborative, but it's all about self. I'm too many times I watch the things on Instagram is where you hear so many folks are talking about their aesthetic, ladies and gentlemen. They're aesthetic, they're aesthetic, they're grid. Your grid does not make you the man or the woman that it is that you are. Your grid shows who you really truly are. When are you going to put those raw moments of you being vulnerable? Because that's where we're operating off of, ladies and gentlemen. When are you going to simply sit here and stop just being about purpose of self? When are you going to sit here and actually show, hey, you know what? This is what I'm going through today. Make it teachable. I can go through my comments and I see what everybody's saying, ladies and gentlemen. But you know what? That's not ego-based. That's not ego-driven. And shout-outs to all the ghost followers and the stories as well. Just watching what you're doing. But they can't speak to what you're doing. Right? We're so quick to, like... Kylie Jenner, Kim Kardashian, Justin Timberlake, 50 Cent, Drake's posts of what they're doing in their day-to-day. But when we have folks that are out here spreading good gospel, speaking a great message, doing the necessary things to get forward, 
we tend to turn a blind eye to that. We celebrate celebrities before we actually celebrate the people that are in our surrounding that are accessible. There's people out here say, oh, Roar, you're a celebrity. I've been places. I know who you are. They know that I have a podcast because they see how I give it up. They know that I'm a connector by heart because how I give it up. But you know what you never will say about Rory out here? Is that Rory's an opportunist and Rory's a user. He uses people or he gates keeps people to simply sit here and do what it is he needs to do. No, because I believe in sharing the fruits. My guest said it. Your podcast bears good fruit. Good fruit for you to be picked, for you to consume, for you to eat, palatable, digestive. But when you don't bear good fruit, you'll always be the one that's out here saying, oh, well, this person doesn't like me. That person doesn't like me. You know, all these people I just not friends with anymore or I'm not connected with anymore. You want to know why? I'm going to look in the camera and I'm going to say this to you just a little tiny, little close, just a little bit closer. I'm going to move. It's because people can tend to understand who you are. And they know that you're operating off of a lens of just being someone who's out for self. You know, they always say is the ones that are out here talking about, oh, none of these people like me. People don't like you because they know where you're coming from. See, in this space, in this world, it's better in life not to be liked but to be respected people may not like you but they have to respect you and i understand some folks out here are climbing uphill battle they have a lot of trials and tribulations with life and content creation and workflow and just things that happen that are out of our control but the thing in life I've always consistently kept saying is you got to pull your socks up, pull your underwear on. Heck, if you need to change that two to three times out the day and just figure it out and bite on that mouth guard and be who you say you're going to be. Look into that mirror. You've heard me say this on the podcast. Tap on your skin and figure out who you are and what's the purpose you're wanting to live by. Because that's what it comes down to. Knowing your purpose. I'm going to speak to the podcasting community real quick here. You're coming into this space, find the right resources and know why you're doing it. You're coming into this space, do it to the best of your ability. You're coming into this space, bulk record all your episodes. You're coming into this space, be genuine and pure with how you're standing into your space and what you're wanting to cement to. You're coming into this space. You're going to have to understand it's a long journey. It's a long road. All roads speak to what? Long days, even longer nights to shorter mornings. When you come into this space, always make sure you tuck a thing called humbleness underneath your belt. Be humble in your approach. Be humble with every guest. Be humble with the things that you get. Doesn't matter what the check is being cut. Be humble and be gracious with it. Be humble. Be humble with your stance. Be humble with your approach. Be humble. They say the humblest calf sucks the most milk. Watch videos of cadences. Don't make your podcast be all about performative ability. Sometimes when you're doing your editing, don't clean it up to the point where it just simply looks like, hey, this was heavily edited. What did they really talk about? Why has it got to be so heavily edited? Sometimes keep them raw, vulnerable moments into the podcast because you know what? More people can relate to that. You heard Cat, you heard. You heard Cat Williams say it to Shannon Sharp, one of the highest, highest podcast interviews of all time. He said, Shannon, for 2024, it's going to be a sense of accountability. And you see that happening in everything that we're doing. 
There's so many raw conversations that are happening out here. Because some folks are fed up. Some folks want to have the deep, rooted conversations, the deep conversations that are going to simply sit here and amplify who it is you are, amplify your voices, amplify your spaces. I'm going to tell you this right now, being a content creator or even being an entrepreneur is one of the loneliest roles that you'll ever encounter. And I think that's what the fear for a lot of folks are, that long journey, that long road. But here's what I'm going to tell you something here is it doesn't have to be a long road is when you have the right people around you. It's not a long road when you actually have the right voices that are empowering you, the right voices that are checking in, the right voices that are sending voice notes, the right voices that are simply sitting here picking up the phone and calling you and doing touch bases and doing mentor and mastermind ability and techniques. The right voices that simply sit here and ask, how can I alleviate your stress? The right voices and the right energy that's around you that wants to pick you up if you're falling down. Right. Or want to sit with you as you're simply sitting here doing editing and they got something else that they're doing. That's those habits I'm talking about. Having those right men or women in your life, especially if you're dating, that understands the plight and the journey that it is you're going to. Because guess what? They want to champion what it is going on. Maybe they want to jump on that train, get into that conversation, get onto that bus, get in that vehicle with you because they want to see what your workflow is. They want to help you. They want to know how to edit. They want to know how to simply sit here and hold the camera. Maybe they want to buy a camera and take the conversation and take everything for themselves. That's what it's about. Teamwork makes the dream work. Dream work makes the teamwork. It's not about just sharing the podcast. Are you wanting to build in the trenches on the back end? And are you coming in for all the right reasons? See, if you see 40 hours of work week, and then you see another 15 to 20 hours altogether, don't take that personal. Make it professional. Make it your ability. Make it your stance to simply sit here and look at that man, look at that woman as a content creator and ask, how can I help elevate you? How can I help simply sit here and make your life easier? Because I've said this in life. It's not only about dating, folks. People either come into your life with a passion of peace or they just bring nothing but chaos. Podcasting and entrepreneurship will continuously be a long, lonely road. Because you're doing something different from what society is preaching. You're doing something different than what society is simply sitting here positioning into. And this is the reason why you see a lot of folks are now opening up their eyes. They're opening up the blinders and they say, "Is I no longer want to be controlled. I want to take my life in my own hands. I want to take the things that it is I want to do and I want to get better. Because guess what? Maybe getting that bi-weekly check ain't what it's supposed to be. Maybe I have the ability to simply sit here and strive for a thing called greatness, but rallying the right team, rallying the right energy and rallying the people that believe in your mission. Ladies and gentlemen, I will say it again. Entrepreneurship and podcasting is based all off your community. And you're going to have some low bearing fruit that come around you that don't have the right alignment. They don't see what you see because they operate from a place of self, ego, and an abundance of just wanting to simply sit here and to trample and to pre and they want to trample on you. They want to step on you. They want to say things in private rooms or in private spaces, but they can't champion you because you have the essence, the aura and the oil to simply sit here and to shine bright like a diamond. Rihanna said it best shine bright like a diamond. But diamonds have to go through the most extreme pressure to be able to shine and to be able to show what they're really truly capable of. You wanna be in this podcasting space? Make those right connections. You wanna be in that entrepreneurship space? Make those right connections. Find those coaches that are gonna be able to simply sit here and then this lock you into what it is you need to be in and find those mentors that are gonna be the ones that are checking in on you. That is my time for the Mitchell Report Unleashed podcasting. And yes, podcasting will eventually call your bluff. It will. It's an unforgiving space, ladies and gentlemen. 
And understand for the days that you don't show up on podcasting, there's another podcast being hatched. There's another viral clip about to happen. But do not look at the viral clips. Do not look at the folks that are simply sitting here launching new podcasts. Be consistent in your space. Be consistent in your stance. And level up to the best of your ability. You have it inside of you each and every day. Turn on the bell notification. Subscribe to the podcast. And leave a comment and let me know what you think. Let's go.